CalCCH Integrator 2018.2 Product Update Webinar. I'm Bianca and I'll be your moderator today. Your presenters today from Walters Kluwer are Jim Edwards, Global Director for CCH Integrator, and Bryony Campbell, Director of Product for CCH Integrator. In today's webinar, Jim and Bryony will cover the main enhancements available in the most recent upgrade. You can submit questions via the questions tab at any time throughout the webinar. Due to the amount of content we need to cover, we may need to respond to questions post the webinar. I think we're ready to begin, so I'll hand you over to Jim and Bryony. Thanks very much, Bianca, and um, hello, everybody. It's uh, Jim Edwards here. Um, uh, appreciate your time today uh, to actually go through a quick update on what's, uh, what's included in this latest product release of ours. As, it's, uh, as we've been doing the last couple of software releases, we're, uh, we're running these short sessions now just to provide a very, very quick snapshot and high-level overview of what's been included uh, in each release and also talk a little bit more about what's coming both for the remainder of this year, but also looking at what's happening within our innovation labs. Um, so we'll cover that same agenda today. Uh, we got some really good feedback from the earlier sessions in terms of the amount of time that we're spending and where we've been spending our time. But again, just always um, open for feedback and encourage you to, uh, to send through questions, comments uh, to any of your, uh, your CCH integrator contacts. Uh, in terms of the major highlights for today for the 2018.2 release, uh, there's been a whole bunch of um, user experience or user interface improvements made to the, the platform. Um, and I, I think as I explained to you in the, in the last session, for those of you who managed to attend that, uh, we're really trying to make a concerted effort to try and simplify the integrator application. So really taking on board the fact that um, tax compliance and reporting is a fairly infrequent process, usage is therefore minimal, uh, but when you're in there using the application, of course, you're under time pressure and, and may forget how to use certain aspects of the application. So really trying to make advancements in the the simplification of the, of the platform, um, and which is a progressive journey. But uh, So we've got some updates to share with you there today. Uh, also, other major themes of changes around tax accounting. Uh, so some, some great innovations and changes there to improve the, uh, the automation and reconciliation and transparency of that area. Uh, improvements around web sheets, workflow, and then finally security. Uh, after that, as I said, we'll then take a little bit of a look at into the future, both for this year and next. Um, so just a, a visual representation, again, of where our focus areas have been uh, in this uh, previous release. So looking again at the overall schematic of the platform overview, you can see there the, the, the areas highlighted in red as to where our focus has been. So onto the details. So firstly, uh, on the user interface side, uh, I mentioned we're making a number of user experience improvements. Now, you can see there's a screenshot that's just included there on the, on the right-hand side. Um, Sorry about the, it's a bit of an eye test, so a little bit small for you to probably see on screen. Um, but a couple of things that you'll probably notice when you first look at it. Um, you'll notice that the uh, the top menu bar, um, the graphics that have been used now are very much a, a sort of modern two-dimensional style. Um, prior to this release, a lot of the, the icons that we used were more sort of three-dimensional in nature, um, sort of more for more you know, uh, classic uh, technology platforms, but we're, we're moving to a sort of more contemporary style. Um, that, that sort of sort of we, we're moving much more to to simple toning um, and simple and hopefully self-explanatory graphics throughout the application, so that uh, so that it's not as, as confusing for uh, for end users trying to use the, the platform. Structurally, there's no um, dramatic changes to the application. You know, you've still got the menu on the left-hand side. You can see in this screenshot that the the menu is actually suppressed on that left-hand side. Those three little bars there. That's actually been replacing for what was the original pin icon. Um, so you're probably aware with most modern applications, I think it's referred to as a hamburger icon, but that those three horizontal lines there are indicating the uh, the menu, which when you hover over it, that'll actually pop out and later then to navigate to other parts of the screen. Um, you, uh, we've also changed the way in which the, the left-hand menu now works as well, so that as you're clicking on screens or, or menu options on the left-hand side, it'll of course still load on the right-hand side as it has in the past, but the menu will keep getting out of your way. It'll keep being hidden and um, maximizing the amount of workspace that you've got to then, uh, to then view the application in. So there's just another illustration of a revised screenshot there with the balance sheet. So moving on to, and so just before moving on to tax accounting, a couple of other things as well I'll just mention there quickly too. We've also been just, just um, subtly changing some of the tones and colors and font styles as well through the application. Again, just make it a little bit more consistent and, uh, and easier to review and work with. So moving on to tax accounting, um, over to you, Bronnie. Great, thanks, Jim. 
Hi everyone. So um, as Jim said, there's some general themes for this year and certainly we've talked um, these through with you in the last um, six to nine months as well and tax accounting being one of them. Um, in 2018.2, we've delivered a new um, enhancement that many of you, uh, I guess, uh, many of the users that had previously used Tax um, Integrator will be familiar with, and that's the edit check. So on the tax accounting summary, we've brought through an enhancement that provides users with an edit check for, their, for the purposes of, of ensuring that their journals that they will post back into the general ledger are balanced. So it's a really handy feature. Um, it means that there's um, a lot more visual cues to the end user uh, to be able to provide them, obviously with a bit more of a, a heads up of, of when they may have a problem um, reconciling their numbers. So as you can see on the, on the right hand side, there's that edit check. So um, we think that's a, a, you know, an, an overdue enhancement as far as we're concerned, um, but we're glad that we've brought that through. So, um, you can be sure that in the next, um, definitely in the next 18 months, um, that you'll see more and more of these tax accounting enhancements coming through. So um, with regard to the edit check itself, obviously um, when it comes to, I guess, opening balances and when it comes to things like tax payments and um, tax receivables, there's not an edit check for that because it's not double-sided sometimes. So obviously rolling balances forward from, the, from a previous period, you're not going to have things like um, deferred income tax or current income tax expense. And likewise, for tax payments and tax receivables, it's not always, it's not a double entry. Um, so we haven't put the edit check there, but we have against all other um, balances that make sense to provide an edit check for. Where the good news is, is that from an integrator perspective, um, we've found in terms of the testing that we've done, it's very, it's actually quite difficult um, to get an edit, edit check where, where they don't, um, where they don't actually balance, where the journals don't actually balance. And, and typically when it does happen, it's generally where there's been, say, an adjustment made via the adjustment schedule where it may not have been double entry. So, um, which is good news, I guess, from an end user's perspective. But never, nevertheless, this is actually obviously a, a welcomed enhancement that people have been asking for for a while now. Thanks, Kim. Thanks, Bryony. Yep, so moving on now. Um, so web sheets for those of you who haven't already heard about web sheets um which we've probably covered on the last couple of webinars uh web sheets is the is the next generation calculation uh platform that sits behind integrator um we've effectively taken all of the learnings of the last 15 years of integrators innovation um and and implemented web sheets to allow uh, user configurable uh, data collection calculation and reporting of any type of data set for tax um, so we're using it as the underlying framework to support all, all future innovations now on Integrator. Um, in fact, it's the underlying um, calculation engine, which is allowing some of the major global service firms and corporations to deploy the technology in many, many countries and flexing to the various different localised uh, tax uh, and, 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 and corporate uh, finance reporting requirements around the world. So with web sheets, um, there's a, uh, because we've got this uh, ability to allow people to define and design their own uh, calculations and schedules, we're finding as the technology has been adopted in some of the more complex tax systems around the world, that people are, uh, are implementing you know, very, very complex uh, web sheet models. Uh, sometimes even north of two to 300 uh, web sheets have been incorporated into the one, into the one workbook. They're so really, really uh, detailed and uh, data heavy um, and, and, and calculation and processing heavy, um, uh, heavy calculation modules. So with that in mind, uh, we've incorporated a new change to improve the responsiveness of the application. We've got this new feature that, um, that we've ca called an auto-calculate feature. And what it is, in essence does is it allows the end user to actually um, defer the recalculation of the full, of the full model. So um, similar to, to Microsoft Excel, if you've got a significantly large spreadsheet, of course, I think you can, you can switch off the, uh, the recalculate function there as well. Um, so it just it allows the uh, the application to then be much more responsive uh, when operating in that mode on a large complex uh, web sheet. Uh, in addition to that too, we've also made another change to web sheets where, um, and for those of you who've been using Integrator for a while, you're probably familiar with the situation that arises where if you leave the application idle for a period of time, um, you, you're, you're exposed to being kicked out by the application depending upon the succession expiry configuration setting. So of course, for security reasons, we do, we do need to expire sessions and, and terminate a session. 
And at that point in the integrator classic componentry or the way that the integrator has operated up until today, um, data, data was exposed to being lost if you hadn't actually hit the save button. Um, under this new web sheets model and enhancement, what we've done is we've incorporated a, an auto save feature. Um, so the user doesn't have to rec remember to hit save before they go away and get a cup of coffee and then forget, uh, forget to come back. Uh, Bryony, back to you. Workflow. So generally within the application, I, I think everyone, um, well, everyone, every user now has access to our workflow module within the integrator. Um, the way that we see workflow though is that is that we're trying to within the application um, to enhance the overall um, tax process workflow for, for users. Um, there's lots of different users, different types. They're using integrator for different purposes. So it might be tax accounting, it might be just a tax return, it might be for data collection, or it might be for GST. So what we've done in the integrator is, is um, enhance the application to allow deep linking. So if, if I'm a user that's maybe not familiar with the application, but I need to go into Integrator and provide information, I don't really, I haven't been trained on the application or I don't need to know the application outside of a particular um, workbook with a particular web sheet or web sheet, then I can actually link through um, to Integrator and, and the users can click on it and, and be sent straight to the, the, the web sheet that they need to enter the data in. So it obviously allows for a, a very seamless experience from an end user. As, um, as I said, a lot of the users may be infrequent or they may not know the application at all. So um, what we've done is, is essentially provide that functionality to them and, and make that process as easy as possible. So um, the deep links can be embedded into external applications, which is great. Um, and uh, we see that this uh, this uh, feature will, will essentially be a step in the direction of us providing greater workflow capability um, for end users. So um, that's a welcomed enhancement, this, this um, release. Yeah, and probably just to add to that too, Bryony, we're finding that a number of uh, corporations and service firms are Seeking to use Integrator as the underlying data management platform to support whatever process, whether it's collecting data for an outsourced process or collecting data from, from finance professionals across the organisation who need to feed that data into tax for compliance and reporting. Um, of course, a lot of the data providers, you don't necessarily want to expose them to all of the, the nuances of the application, uh, which then might in, require a level of training which you don't have time to do or, or, or want to do. Um, so this. So often what's happening is there, there'll be a, another platform that might sit in front of Integrator, um, which might support that broader process. Or you may just want to send someone a, a deep link to one individual page like this. So there's various different ways you can, you can actually use this deep linking. As I said, some people will use, use it to integrate back into uh, other standardized corporate workflow systems that they've got. Um, we are using this also as a framework um, within Walters Clua to integrate this with other Walters Clua applications, which, we, which we'll get to a little bit later on when we talk about the future. Uh, Bryony, security. Great. So for some time now, um, when we have either implemented Integrator or um, over time we've, we've gotten feedback from clients that they'd like to be able to maintain um, and manage their users and entities in bulk. So what we've done is we've actually provided that functionality in 2018.2. Um, users will now be able to maintain both users and entity in bulk via an Excel upload. So obviously this is another step in the, way, in the um, process in terms of um, providing greater automation of routine tasks within Integrator. Um, and, and a lot of our clients have annual IT reviews, they, um, where um, they'll get findings, um, so that employees may have come and gone or, or entities are no longer relevant. Um, so this provides um, a way that, that those changes that are required um, be done and automated in a, in a um, much easier um, way. So, um, and certainly when we're implementing Integrator, um, it's gonna be a lot easier obviously for clients now to create their users and their entities. So. As you can see on screen, there's a bit of a screenshot of a template that can be used by clients. We'll be making this available on uh, Zendesk, on our uh, CCH Tax Help Desk. Um, and that's the format in which that the file um, needs to be 
in in order to bulk up, update update those upload those changes I should say into Integrator. So as you can see, it's the user ID, what type of user they are, um, their name, their email address, and so on and so forth. So um, be really interested to get people's feedback on that. Um, certainly, we've had a lot of feedback over time that that would be a welcome enhancement. So by all means, um, we've got our uh, Jim's and my contact details at the end of the session. So it'd be great to get your feedback. All right, so now let's look a little bit uh, into what's what we've got planned for the next couple of releases out throughout the remainder of 2018, and then we'll step into uh, into the, the innovation labs and what we're doing in, uh, for, for, for next year and beyond. Um, so there's really three core themes um, of areas where we're looking at making some fairly rapid advancements um, in, in three strict areas. As Bronnie was saying before, tax accounting. Tax accounting is one of the key areas and priorities for 2018 that we're getting back to. So getting back to basics and ensuring that we're automating all of those routine processes within tax accounting, providing improved transparency over the numbers and the data which sit within the platform, and improving some of the, the transparency of things like um, you know, equity adjustments as well. Uh, as I mentioned before, usability, I've probably talked to you about that one enough, um, really trying to uh, simplify the user interface to support that infrequent use, particularly for um, people who properly fit outside the tax function but are, but are data contributors into the tax process, but also those who are sitting within a tax function who might just be a, a, um, not so strong on perhaps tax accounting, trying to provide them more guidance and support when they're going through actually entering adjustments that might be uh, non-routine in nature. Uh, and then the last area that we're making a lot of advancement is again around web sheets and uh, as I said, this is the this is the, the area of the platform which is pretty exciting um, and we've got some significant major global corporations with well-known brands who are now adopting this web sheet technology um, to do some pretty sophisticated calculations uh, around operational TP, um, high, high process uh, tax transactional um, calculations. So, you know, apportionment type calculations and um, data analytic type tests as well. Uh, anything which has been done within a spreadsheet that's somewhat routine in nature, uh, corporations are now looking to implement in web sheets. So, and, there's some industries in particular that are uh, that are jumping onto this. So particularly organisations in the financial services sector, which tend to have, you know, high data volumes and um, uh, that 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 are, that are somewhat routine in nature and can be automated. That have you know routinely been done in Excel in the past. Um, so jumping into the detail now, uh, Bryony on tax accounting. Great. Um, so. Over the past uh, six to nine months in particular, we've spoken to many of you in regards to the tax accounting enhancements, um, what we have planned and, and ideally what you'd like to see within the platform. So that's been fantastic. And, and certainly again, I'd encourage everyone to um, provide us that feedback continuously, which is great. Um, and we'll take those on board. So some of the things that we are looking at, um, again, is splitting out the equity and other column in, within Integrator. So, We've been looking at that um, and analysing that for probably about the good six months now, speaking to quite a number of clients about the approach that we'll take. Um, obviously, our tax accounting module is quite sophisticated um, given it's a global tax accounting solution. Um, and so uh, we can't make changes to the application. Um, you know, we can't take those lightly. We have to look at, at all the possible outcomes um, required for the platform. So um, certainly we're on the pointy end of finalising that analysis and, um, and getting that done in the second half of the year. So that's quite exciting. Um, another enhancement that we're looking at as well, um, is similar to Equity Other, is enhancements regarding the uh, asset schedule in particular. So what we would want to do is be able to make um, certain adjustments, so um, equity in particular, as well as deferred only adjustments really easy and, and, and automate those pro, those adjustments for clients a lot more than, than what you can today. So that one, again, we've been speaking to quite a few clients about as well. So um, in addition to that, we've also been looking at the ability to input the closing balance for tax sensitive accounts on the balance sheet. So um, certainly from an income tax um, or a tax revision perspective, um, uh, some clients are, are very keen on um, being able to input the closing balance as opposed to having to put input the movement. So we've definitely taken on that feedback and that's certainly an enhancement that we're looking to provide as well. There's other enhancements as well that um, we're certainly looking at. 
Um, these are likely to happen um, more so um, from 2019, but certainly um, we're looking at the ability to, to be able to make tax depreciable adjustments via a work paper on the profit and loss. So um, for many of you, they, they ha um, you have uh, tax only assets um, that you want to adjust for that's in the P&L. You want to be able to automate those and have those carry across to the asset schedule. So that's certainly something that we're looking at, at providing. Um, also, when we've spoken to clients um, and clients who use a platform for both tax provision and tax return um, perspective, certainly they've, they've been asking for more of an edit check capability between what's happening in the statement of taxable income versus um, the disclosures. So if there's obviously the two of them should marry up and typically when they don't marry up, um, there's a, say, a interschedule mapping um, uh, issue um, that, that, you know, a, a mapping item may not have been mapped or um, it may have been mapped to the wrong disclosure. So what we're looking at doing is actually providing an on-screen um, uh, check or edit check um, where users can get comfort um, between what they've got in their statement of taxable income and ensuring that that's, that's being reflected correctly in the disclosures. So it's something that we're actually starting to look at now which is quite exciting. Um, another thing that we were looking at is, is more to do with is tax accounting related, but certainly it's more about that user experience um, uh, point that Jim was making earlier in terms of we want to make things easier for clients to do. So thankfully, you know, mapping doesn't happen to have to happen all the time, but um, certainly when, when uh, we're implementing for clients, there's a mapping process and certainly year on year, there's inevitably some mapping to be done, some updates that have come through that need to be reflected in the mapping. So what we were looking at doing is making that process a lot more intuitive and obviously a lot more efficient and effective for clients. So um, again, um, we certainly will be reaching out um, to more clients. We've definitely had some feedback from clients and we'll be looking at canvassing those ideas with you. But if you do have any feedback in particular, or, or should I say any ideas um, that you think would be really valuable, then we'd love to hear from you. Great, over to you, Jim. Thanks, Bryony. Yes, yeah, so moving on to the next area, which is around uh, web sheets. Uh, there's a, a number of advancements we're making in the web sheets area, the platform, which will make a dramatic uh, dramatic improvement into the way in which you can use this great new web sheets module um, as part of your routine compliance and reporting processes. So one of the major areas is to in integrate web sheets back into the core tax accounting uh, module that we've already got today. Uh, what we're doing there is uh, allowing you to then use the flexibility of the web sheets to streamline the way in which you're collecting data from your upstream finance and, and, um, and other data sources. Uh, automate routine tax adjustments and then feed them directly back into the, the core or what we're calling the classic uh, integrated tax accounting module. Um, so you'll get the benefit of, of both there. You'll get the power of the web sheets in terms of flexibility of calculation. So reducing the amount of reliance you might have on Excel to, to, to calculate um, items of, of tax adjustments, uh, but then flowing through into the tax accounting module to calculate current deferred tax expense and then do all the associated reporting off the back of it. Um, the other change that we're looking to do too is what we call a dynamic flow of accounts. It's a bit of a technical term there, but essentially allowing you to um, flow lower levels of detail, so you know, sub accounts if you like, as we probably call them in the application, through to subsequent schedules. This is really important, particularly in tax regimes where you've got the need to disclose more granular information out to, out to regulators. Um, a good example of that would be um, for example, you know, in Australia where we've got the new requirement to disclose uh, intercompany transactions in the Australian local file, of course you've got transactions that need to be collected, aggregated and ultimately then flow through to a, a disclosure. So this new dynamic flowing will support um, that kind of uh, disclosure but also make for a more uh, seamless review of, of the subsequent schedules. Defaulting of values on web sheets, so this is all about trying to again pre-configure templates in the platform that support um, routine processing. So um, being able to set certain attributes on your web sheet that cannot then be modified on the underlying workbooks so that you're minimizing the amount of risk of manual entry and overwrite um, within workbooks each reporting period. 
um, ongoing improvements around uh, responsiveness and performance improvement. Um, and the last one there is a pretty interesting one, exciting, is around transaction uh, analysis capability with web sheets. We recently ran an innovation tournament um, through Walters Kluwer where uh, we called it the Code Games. And as part of that, we actually had five innovations that were done on an integrator and actually executed over a two-day period. Um, a couple of uh, existing integrator clients are actually on the, the judges panel as well. Now we have a we have a, it's a, it's a global award, uh, and a couple of those uh, customers who are highly engaged with our development um, got to give their opinions. But one of them was around this transaction analysis, and uh, what it essentially allows you to do is, is to plug integrator back into your upstream ERP system, suck through all of your underlying transactions, whether they be payable, receivable, or, or other transactions, um, execute automated tests. Um, to filter and, and identify perhaps anomalous transactions or transactions within us that have a certain pattern around them and then feed them directly into a web sheet which can then perform automatically perform some sort of calculation or summarization uh, or do whatever. So it's, we're getting further and further into the world where we can pull in underlying transactional information in addition to the trial balance information to then support more automation of, of again, tax compliance reporting. So pretty exciting stuff coming in there. A um, couple of other areas of change around user interface accessibility and um, and for this first one, I'll, I'll just hand over to you, Bronnie. Thanks, Tim. So um, for many of you, we've certainly uh, spoken about, in the, again, in the, probably in the last 12 months more than anything, is the ability to um, use um, different browsers within Integrator. So we do know that um, currently within Integrator, um, in order to use the application, um, it's dependent on Internet Explorer. So we did some um, some initial work in in um, the first quarter of the year, um, and which was delivered in 2018.1. So it's some background work to enable, um, start to enable us to be able to use other browsers other than um, Internet Explorer. So um, what we will be looking at um, to do throughout um, the back end of 2018 and into 2019 is further development work um, in order to um, to finalise the, the cross-browser independent um, development work. So ultimately, um, come next year, um, uh, part way through the year next year, um, we sh should be able to, users should be able to use Integrator on, on things like Chrome, as well as um, Firefox and other, other browsers. So that will, be, that will be coming next year. Thanks, Brian. Yep. Um, the next point there, again, are just around user interface. Uh, so a couple of further things that we're doing in there, um, in addition to what you've already seen there with these menu updates and whatnot, we're looking at incorporating a lot more contextual-based help within the application. So, um, uh, you know, both of both of uh, help and guides and quick reference guides, which we produce as part of releasing the core product, we're going to actually start to embed them within the application themselves so that people don't have to leave the application to then go and find out how to, how to execute something. But in addition to that, where you've configured your own template and you want to try and provide some guidance to your, your preparers and reviewers, in addition to the sort of the workflows and checklist screens that you've got there to help provide some level of prompts and guides to your users, we're going to actually allow you to, to add some additional context, context sensitive type help. Um, just to again make it a little bit more uh, intuitive for those end users so they can be more efficient in their use. Ronnie? Great. So within Integrator currently we have a number of corporate income tax returns that can be filed um, throughout from a global sense, um, certainly both from corporate income tax and also from a VAT GST and, and we spoke about in the last webinar that we were looking at, at delivering a end-to-end -end tax accounting and tax return preparation solution for the UK. So um, we're continuing to do the background analysis to that. Uh, in terms of the development, it's certainly for us, it's, it's um, now scheduled for 2019. We had hoped to have it in the back end of this year. Um, however, there's third, there is quite a significant amount of work for us to work through on that, um, and we do want to get that right. We've got a number of clients that have global um, interests, and, and certainly we're, we're, we see that this is going to be quite a um, popular um, a solution within the application. So we look forward to developing that further. Yeah, in fact, we've got a number of corporations that have been using Integrator for a while um, with UK subsidiaries or UK parent companies that we're partnering with in the design development of that. So uh, again, if there's anyone um, 
involved on the call today who's got an interest in, uh, in in having a look at our designs or being involved in the uh, in the in in helping design the way it looks at the end and operates, and uh, we would love to get further involvement. The next um, area is just around automation. So we have been making some further advancements with the use of robotic process automation technologies. So you probably all heard of the, the various tools that are out there, like your blue prisms and automation anywhere and UiPath. Uh, we've been uh, using some of these technologies as well to automate those routine processes. Um, within and around integrator. Um, we are now looking at actually, uh, we're working with one of those vendors to incorporate this robotic process automation into the integrator stack so that we can actually um, sort of extend that offering then out to our corporate clients and, and service firm clients to automate those processes within and around the platform. So yeah, stay tuned on further updates around that. Uh, the next area is just uh, what we call the innovation labs. And the innovation labs is where we're effectively, you know, it might be called skunk works, but where we're, we've got a bunch of research and development uh, underway uh, in a number of areas where we know we're going to be taking the platform in the future. And the first one here is in relation to the integration of Integrator with CCH Togetic. Uh, for those of you who haven't heard of CCH Togetic before, um, it's uh, one of the uh, leading uh, corporate performance management platforms as rated by Gartner uh, and uh, and is competing very heavily with uh, the likes of uh, SAP uh, and Oracle uh, in the area of doing um, budgeting, forecasting, planning and financial management and IFRS disclosure management. Um, it also supports Solvency 2 reporting for the insurance sector but the, the platform itself is a highly flexible and adaptable um, financial reporting solution for the office of the CFO um, and it's been used by somewhere over a thousand uh, multinational corporations, very well known brands um, to manage uh, manage their financial uh, consolidation reporting uh, disclosure processes. Now Togetic itself has some very, very strong capabilities in terms of dashboard management uh, and data analytics. Uh, and we're actually now working um, on a pilot process at the moment with one of our integrated clients going through the process of integrating uh, all of Integrator's tax data, which has been collected and calculated through the Integrator platform as part of the, you know, the, the tax reporting process, and integrating that back into Togetic. So leveraging the dashboarding and data analytics capabilities are already proven in the Togetic stack, but then extending that out to tax. Um, so we're working on that over the next three months, and we look forward to showing you our, our progress um, you know, sometime uh, probably in early Q4. The next area is around web sheets. Uh, I think I might have mentioned this one to you last time as well, but we've now um, got a, a prototype up and running where we can take your existing Excel spreadsheets and literally import them directly into Integrator. What it, the, the platform does is it'll pick up that spreadsheet, automatically run it through a converter, and dynamically create web sheets in the platform for you. So there's literally zero configuration required to go live and get your old spreadsheets up and running in the cloud on Integrator. Um, next area is around data analytics, and this kind of ties back into what we are talking about with that first point, with Togetic integration, but the same framework that we're putting in place to support um, you know, consolidated dashboarding and data analytics can also then be used with your own proprietary or um, uh, your own local uh, data analytics tools, so Click, Tableau, and Power BI. So what we're doing is we're building some web services, or we have built actually, some web services that, that sit on the back of the integrator that allow you to consume that data that's sitting within the integrator platform. Uh, office integration is another area that we're doing um, some work on at the moment. Um, we're actually building what we're calling a collaborative disclosure management module in Integrator, which will essentially operate wholly within the Microsoft Word environment, the way to pull the data which has already been collected and calculated and reconciled from the Integrator platform directly into a Word and then eventually in a Microsoft Excel environment. So have, leveraging the power of Microsoft Office, but then pulling in data that's already been, um, you know, uh, been calculated in the controlled environment of Integrator. The last area is just about robotics as a service, and I you know, talked about one earlier on, but uh, what we're looking at doing there is they're standing up these robots so that we can extend them and offer them out to, out to you as, uh, as consumers of the, of the platform. So as you can see, there's a fair bit going on at the moment. Um, the, the overall integrated business, I'm, you know, I'm glad to say that it's, it's continuing to, to grow very rapidly with a lot of new customers coming online, um, a lot of new end users 
Um, we can report some statistics on that actually at our next get together in terms of just the number of users and the amount of uh, amount of usage the platform's getting. But uh, but thanks again for your your ongoing support. Um, and yeah, please, we want to really try and con uh, continue to encourage you to engage directly with us. Um, if you've got any questions or comments or concerns or or interested in knowing a little bit more about um, you know some of these new innovations, you know, obviously web sheets I've spoken about quite a lot today. Um, it's it's pretty exciting and it's pretty transformational. Uh, all of the big four service firms are now uh, using this technology in one way or another, um, and and looking at trying to innovate their outsource compliance processes and build new solutions off the back of it. So there's there yeah, stay tuned. There'll be lots of activity going on. And, and again, if you've got routine processes that sit within your tax function that you think are, are opportunities for automation, you know, have a chat to us and we can have a look to see what can be achieved through the uh, the worksheet stack. So thank you very much for your time today and um, yeah, look forward to seeing you again next quarter. Thank you to Jim and Bryony for today's presentation. To all of our attendees, have a great day.